Uh, Jason Lavallia, thank you so much for joining us today. If you, we could just start by getting a little bit of your, your background, what you do for IBM. Well, thank you for having me. Uh, so I lead real estate for IBM across all the Americas. Uh, that includes Canada, US and Latin America, uh, comprised of 40 million square feet, uh, segmented with office space, warehouse, data center, manufacturing plants, and research and development. Thank you very much. Now, now in terms of, of COVID and this whole global pandemic issue, um, you, you move 95% of your global employees from office to home. How are you able to pull that off? We really took a kind of a very, very proactive approach uh, that started with, you know, focusing first on where our central workers were located uh, and the missions that they performed uh, and whether those needed to continue. And the answer to the nature of them being essential was yes, they needed to continue. They need to continue for the benefit of uh, of all of our clients and all the, the companies uh, and industries that depend so heavily on IBM to be successful. And many of which even, even more importantly through the pandemic, uh, when you think of healthcare and the financial industry and so on and so forth. Uh, we had to keep them safe and secure uh, and uh, we could not allow any disruption to, to the, that critical work um, because you know, IBM, you know, manages uh, and with our products run the world's major infrastructure. Uh, secondly, after, you know, after we worked through that, we turned our focus to the remainder of the population uh, and we were well positioned with equipment uh, and tools and our practices and policies to already support remote working. Uh, you know, we have several businesses. Uh, GBS is our consulting business. Global markets is a sales business and the talent within those organizations are already very mobile to begin with. Uh, so uh, so that was not a heavy lift for IBM because of the, the way over the years we've enabled our people to be and work flexibly. Uh, and then the last element of it was was really the the creation of, of some new policies and processes. I mean, we we're in unique times and you, new, unique times required us to really rethink uh, you know, uh, ultimately how we were governed and how we delivered the business and, uh, and, uh, you know, new routines, uh, routines of people were upended, which required some new routines to take place in order to ensure safety. So we, uh, we did create some new policies, uh, uh as a result of uh, the onset of, of the pandemic. Now you, you developed a return to workplace playbook. Can you tell us a little bit about that playbook? Sure. Uh, you know, that was really the start of the kind of the new institution of policy and process. Um, and we began uh, by, you know, first taking direction by public health guidelines uh, and seeing how those guidelines uh, mirrored up to our own IBM standard. We assembled a cross-functional team under the governance of our crisis management uh, uh, structure, came together uh, and really started to pull in uh, all the facts, all the information, all the data. Uh, all the guidance uh, from uh, uh, from you know governing bodies and agencies to be able to develop what was most importantly uh, a, a simple uh, uh, playbook that could be well understood by all different realms of the people that needed to depend on it. So we we certainly had uh, our business unit leaders, uh, our site location executives uh, that needed to be able to. Uh, direct their employees uh, that needed to be made, able to inform to make decisions on uh, whether we we're going to close locations, whether we we're going to reopen locations, what level of population we we're going to allow to use a location. Secondly, uh, it was critical for, uh, for us uh, uh, from an FM standpoint because we had to give direction to our uh, facility management organization on, on how they needed to uh, clean locations, how they needed to prepare locations, how do we needed to stock locations with PPE and, uh, and other types of equipment uh, and do so in a, in a very strategic fashion to, uh, to ensure that uh, we could support uh, the people that would need to show up to that location uh, in the most efficient way possible. Those different perspectives and the and the various um, the various items outlay, outlined in a in a really simple format. We uh, we did our best and uh, and uh, allowed us to deliver a level of consistency, which you know when you're looking at an organization that has hundreds of thousands of employees and in over a hundred countries, uh, 
um, you know, being somewhat consistent in our approach allows us to ensure we, uh, we can be scalable and we can be repetitive. And most importantly, we could be very uh, nimble and expeditious and in, in, in ultimately how we did react. Um, and uh, I would say lastly is, you know, although, you know, we continue today to try and make sure that the playbook is, uh, is not overly complicated. It's simple that all levels of, you know, our organization of service providers, when you read it, have uh, the same understanding as to kind of what the direction is. Uh, also acknowledging that uh, at times it needs to be revised and it needs to be reissued uh, because, you know, learnings ad adapt and, uh, and evolve and change. And uh, it's important for us to be dynamic and take, uh, you know, take those learnings and, uh, and allow us to pivot, adjust and modify accordingly. Um, and then, you know, supplement that with communication and training for our people. So they are aware of the changes. Uh, they know why those changes are being made. Uh, and, uh, and likewise, you know, we real estate and our FM teams are able to communicate expectations back as to when those changes will be implemented. Sounds like you could teach a course in change management. That's, that's uh, almost literally word for word. Some of what we talk about in the FM world and, and how to walk people through some of these really challenging situations and trying to message that. So let's, let's switch over to technology and, and talk about your evolving technology needs. And how did that, how did that evolve during the pandemic? It starts with, you know, looking at our own technologies that we have stood up to run, help us run and deliver real estate. Uh, and one of the prominent tools that we use, uh, one of the prominent IBM tools, more most importantly that we use, uh, is Triregal Workplace. Um, and the dependency in the, in the pre-COVID world on Triregal was uh, was certainly using it to manage our leases, the administration of those leases, uh, the uh, the space, uh, and how we ultimately occupy and allocate space out to to businesses, but. Uh, but we had to expand those capabilities if, if we were going to use uh, that tool to be able to help deliver uh, kind of the, the next step in technology as it relates to the workplace. Um, and, uh, and that's not only through leveraging a tool to be able to make reservations and ensuring when you do reserve space, uh, you can do it in a way that uh, that embodies the, the standards of social distancing. Uh, but, uh, but also uh, do it in a way where it, uh, it really helped us deliver the business better. Uh, how you know staff navigated their way around the office uh, so we can do things like uh, health checks, contact tracing, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and allow our FM organization to be more efficient in, in ultimately how they were gonna conduct and deliver their services that they were contracted to do. Uh, so making sure that where we did have rooms utilized or desks utilized that, that we went in right behind them and cleaned. Uh, yeah, COVID definitely has taught us to be very flexible, very nimble. And it's, it's taught us a lot about what's really important. What do you have to distill down to? And so in, in thinking about the future of workplace and, and um, you, you sent everybody home. Um, so you had 95% of your of your global workforce um, working remotely. Tell us more about the future workplace and, and your point of view on that. I think first and foremost, it was approach it through the perspective of the end user. Uh, and the end users show up in so many different ways. It's not only our own employees yep. uh, that use the space, uh, but it's uh, it's the clients that depend on our employees. And it's it's our, it's our vendors, it's our teams that actually have to maintain and operate these locations and making sure that we converge uh, all those different perspectives together and we're, you know, we're, uh, uh, we're delivering a future that, uh, that ultimately is driven by the outcomes that we want to achieve. There's the risk of not being ready and really you know, discouraging uh, your employees and your clients because they're celebrating the ability to come back into the office and then and then realize that it feels or it's different and not necessarily delivering any level of experience that we would suggest or could suggest that warrants people wanting to come back into the office. So being out ahead of it is, is critical and, and uh, being able to recite back to our employees at touch points as to what we're thinking, how we're evolving our thoughts. So, uh, so it is not a surprise when they do come back in and they, there's expectations and we get feedback on those expectations that allow us to uh, to again be nimble in how we adapt. One of our core principles 
uh, is, is giving people the flexibility uh, to work mm -hmm. in an environment that makes sense for them and the types of activities that they do. So uh, it's uh, it's really about validating the purpose of the workplace for each mm -hmm. individual, for each business unit, not promoting a one size fits all approach, uh, but allowing us to uh, to uh, to tweak uh, and to cater to the different types of functions that uh, that the businesses need. It's also enabled, you know, real estate uh, and all the different components of real estate, FM included, uh, to really have the, their voice heard and really be able to move the needle on some of the initiatives that uh, that we want to, you know, we want to deliver upon. Uh, for, you know, for many years prior to technology, facility management was always thought of kind of a service provider industry and or service provider function. And um, and yes, that still is the case. Uh, but with technology, it's allowed us to be very much more of a strategic uh, discipline within real estate. And I think with the technologies that we have in, in employed here, it demonstrates that uh, this is not just about putting out fires. This is also about being thoughtful and strategic and how we plan, uh, how we plan for the future. Um, yeah. I, like, I like how you put that, that it's it's really enabled a more strategic approach and, and, and enabled FM to look more like the strategic discipline that it is and, and kind of highlighting that role change. Mm -hmm. uh, certainly. And um, and it's uh, it's validated that there are great benefits for bringing together people in person. And that's a lot of what we heard. Uh, and uh, uh, as much as people enjoy at times the flexibility of working remote, the same people enjoy the flexibility of coming into the office when they feel that there's benefit for them to come in the office. You know, that's where we see the human moments taking place. Mm -hmm. That's where we yeah. see the chemistry between people, right? And um, and the community, uh, the collisions, uh, the co-creation, the innovation, the transformation, uh, the fun and excitement, the pride that people have, you know, within our organization at IBM and the the rich history. Uh, you know, shows that uh, the workplace really is our opportunity to be a physical representation of the brand and the core at IBM. So as, as you think about lessons learned and, and kind of what you've gone through in this last year and a half now, what are some key lessons that are enabling you to serve IBMers better? We took an opportunity to survey our employees and we received a significant response rate back. Almost half of our employees responded. Uh, and of those, um, about 75% uh, of uh, our employees uh, answered the question that says they feel IBM will absolutely do everything in our power to protect them. And, uh, and that's really, you know, really encouraging to see. And it makes me feel good about the way, you know, the business is run here at IBM that we've established that level of trust and confidence through our real estate team, through our practices and policies and processes. And, uh, and that enables us to build, continue to build the champions that we need within the organization to help promote the constant, you know, evolution of of the workplace, the evolution of the way we deliver the business, uh, uh, because we, we need the sponsorship uh, that uh, will stand behind us and uh, and promote that uh, that they're totally enamored and thrilled with the way real estate has helped uh, respond through this pandemic. Uh, so that's one. Uh, secondly. Um, it's uh, I think a lot of it comes down to uh, looking at people and, and saying sometimes I don't know. I don't know the answer to certain questions and being very transparent about it. Uh, these are unique times. And uh, uh, and while people want answers and uh, and hope to get answers through the questions they ask, I think by by, you know, constantly being open and honest and transparent, you build that level of respect that when you do tell people things uh, in the direction we're headed or instruct them in a certain way, that's why we're able to deliver a 75% trust rate because in the same breath, they also hear us you know, admitting when we're still working to kind of figure out the best solution. I think the other aspect is just be an active listener. Uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's the physical aspects of you know, how we are uh, addressing the current situation and we can visibly display that through the, th the things that we're doing how we protect people through you know through the health checks at the front door and uh, through the technology that we've we, we're deploying and have deployed that i mentioned 
uh, the, uh, the separation and social distancing uh, that's taking place, the reconfiguration of how we deliver food and amenities. We learn every day, right? We, we learn through our people what they want, what they need, what's going to get them comfortable uh, to able to, uh, to you know, come back in the way that they were operating pre-COVID. And, uh, and kind of that's, you know, if I could leave something on kind of our FM counterparts throughout the world, it's, it's you know, make the customer feel like their opinion matters uh, because without the customers, there is no real estate organization. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I, I fully agree. Um, well said. Well, Jason, thank you so much for spending this time with us and for sharing your experience and your um, the wisdom and knowledge that you've gained through this pandemic and, and what you're still working on. I think this, this will be such a, a good help to, uh, to others in the FM community. Thank you so much. And thank you for affording me the time to, uh, to share you know, some of uh, our thoughts and insights here at IBM. And uh, I appreciate it greatly. And we all do here on behalf of IBM. Thank you.